Hi, Mr. Taylor here. Today I'm here to tell you about paragraph structure, specifically paragraph structure when you're using examples in the form of quotes from a text to prove your point. Now, I strongly believe in the pie paragraph recipe because there are three key ingredients that you want to have in every paragraph that you write. First, your point. You've got to tell your reader what your point is in the paragraph so they know what you're talking about. Second, you got to back that up with some information. That's going to be the evidence you use to prove your point. Today, we're going to use quotes from the story. Third, you're going to make sure that you explain those quotes and explain how that evidence backs up your point. So, you can see the paragraph behind me. It's a little bit hard to read on the board, but don't worry, there's a link in the description so that you can take a look at this paragraph up close. I, today, wrote a paragraph about the use of irony in O. Henry's Ransom of Red Chief. Specifically, I'm talking about the situational irony. So my point in the very first sentence is revealed here when I say situational irony, where the opposite of what is expected happens, is the literary element that O. Henry uses to bring much of his humor to the story Ransom of Red Chief. Now you know exactly what I'm going to tell you, and you can start guessing what's going to come up next. I've got this great quote here from the story as my first piece of evidence. It says, just at daybreak, Sam was awakened by a series of awful screams from Bill, Sam said. Red Chief was sitting on Bill's chest, trying to take Bill's scalp. So it's a strong piece of evidence, but I wanted to let the reader know first when that comes up, because if you're not familiar with the story, or even if you've read it, you might not exactly know what I'm talking about here. So, before I give this quote, I have another sentence right after the point to introduce this quote. Here's what I said to introduce this quote to tell you where it came up in the story. I said, ironically, when he should be afraid for his own safety, Johnny terrorizes his kidnappers when they hold him for ransom. And then I introduce it by saying, for example, the kidnappers had just gone to bed when, so now you know exactly where this came up in the story, and the quote's probably going to make a lot more sense. Let's continue. I went and I explained the quote here and how it proved my point, and that's exactly what you want to do next. To explain my point, I said, instead of this little boy being traumatized by the experience of getting kidnapped, the kidnappers are terrified of him. So now you know exactly how my point proves, or how that quote proves my point, and I don't leave it up to the reader to interpret it however they want, because they might have a different interpretation than I did. So, just to make my point even stronger, I've also used a second quote, which is really great to do, as some more evidence. First, I introduced it by telling you where it came up in the story. In this case, I said, also, upon receiving Sam and Bill's ransom letter demanding $1,500, Johnny's father sends the kidnappers a response, not only refusing to pay the ransom, but also demanding payment to take his own child back. Now that you know where this quote came from, I can go ahead and give you the quote. I think you are a little high in your demands and I hereby make you a counter proposition, he wrote, which I am inclined to believe you will accept. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 in cash and I agree to take him off your hands. Now that I've given you the quote, I'm also going to explain why it proves my point. So to do that, I said, this is unexpected because the kidnappers typically receive the ransom, but instead, they are the ones who end up paying to get rid of this obnoxious boy. And just to wrap everything up nicely, I also restated my point in the very last sentence.